Okay, we're here with a former 140 pound champion, Regis Progre, um, you know, who has got to be so thrilled to be able to get another shot at the belt, the WBC belt, against Jose Cepeda after the uh, uh, former champion, Jose Ramirez, had said that he's going to be unable to keep that day. Regis, how happy are you? I mean, the last time I think we saw you on a similar video, you were not very happy that you had been, quote unquote, bypassed for this uh, shot. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just ecstatic about it, bro. I'm um, uh, just everything kind of worked out. Everything kind of worked out the way you know I guess it's supposed to work out. You know, like so basically, my last fight you know, I fought Dubai. That was supposed to be um a mandatory a mandatory spot, right? I know. I remember when I got the call. They said, "All right, the WBC is going to mandate this, you know, for the belt." And so the crazy thing about that is that when I was in LA, I go start. You know, I start my um my training camps in um and so when I was out there, I actually ran to Zaveda at the same time. I ran to him in the gym because me and him share one of the same trainers, um Julian Chua. And so, you know, my manager at the time, my manager he told me, he was like, Man, look, like he don't know, but y'all might be fighting next. And sure enough, you know, it happened. And for me, like I always I always felt like I was supposed to fight Zapeda next, but that's why I was kind of angry, you know, when they put Jose Ramirez in the front in front of me because it was like I, I thought I was mandatory, you know, but you know it all worked out, so I'm just I'm happy for it. Yeah, I mean we can get into that a little bit more, but first let me ask you your thoughts on Zapeda. We know that he's been involved in the uh, you know 2020 fight of the year against Ivan Baranchek. Who could forget that war? Um, he's also been in some other fights. Maybe you know I don't know how you feel about him, but sort of like lacking some action. Um, overall, what's your takeaway of how, how talented he is and the type of threat he poses to you? I mean, I think he's a very, very big threat. You know, um, Southpaw, you know, he, he, he's... Like he's you. Southpaw, he, you know, Southpaw, like me, he's slick, and he has big power, you know. I ain't never you know, underestimate nobody with, with big punching power, you know. So I just, I feel like, you know, in those fights that he kind of lacked is he just, didn't, he just didn't get up for him, you know, and some people do that. Um, but I feel like for me, he knows like I'm probably the most dangerous. He probably he's never seen nobody like me, and I'm probably, I'm pretty sure I'm the most dangerous fighter he's ever faced. So he's definitely gonna get up for this. He's definitely gonna train for it, you know. So I mean, I, I rate him very high, and this is the for me this is the, like the perfect the perfect opponent to fight for the belt again. I don't think there's gonna be one step taken back in this fight. Um, I mean, I'm over, you know, I'm I'm being more smarter, so you know we'll okay, see. Okay. We'll see. Right. I was, you know, um, so we'll see how that goes. It, but it depends. It all depends on what he brings and what he brings out. You know, I mean, I, I've been doing a few interviews right now, and you know, I, I'm telling everybody. You know, one of my, one of my biggest, um, one of my biggest hurdles for me is my mental. Right in my, my mentally, um, I'm I'm supremely confident in myself. You know, and I yeah. actually I'm so. But when I fight somebody, when they tell me I'm fighting somebody, I always overlook somebody. Like, always. I just think, like, I'm a run to him. You know, that's that's something I always think. No matter who I'm fighting, I think, oh, he can't, he can't, he has no chance for me. You know, and I know I'm the opposite because a lot of other fighters, some, some, not a lot of other fighters, but some fighters, they have, you know, they don't have as much confidence as I have. They, you know, they, they doubt themselves. And for me, I'm supremely confident. Every time I fight somebody, it's like, I'm, Oh, I'm whooping him. Automatic. I'm whooping him. He he don't stand no chance with me, you know. I guess I, I won't do that with, you know, Zapata, but I'm still always supremely confident in myself. Well, we know we know that, and hopefully uh, people got a chance to read the story we did. It was really one of my most enjoyable stories I've ever done in boxing, where you were able to talk about all of your daredevil uh, excursions that you do, jumping off cliffs, uh, skydiving, swimming with the sharks, doing all of those things that you do. Um, I think that's what where that's all rooted in, right? I mean, you just are have this no fear mentality. Yeah, I guess you would say that. You know, I'm I'm, I'm getting a little older now, and like I still do all those things, but it's like I do them at the right time now. You know, it's like um I used to do all that stuff in while I'm in training camp. That's the thing. Yeah. I used to do everything while I'm in training camp, and now my mind says like, all right. Let me train for this fight. I, I trained for about eight, nine weeks for a fight. Let me train for this fight. Then I'm going to go do all that stuff. You know, before, man, I I mean, I was doing some crazy stuff. I remember, I remember one time before a fight, I fell off a dirt bike. Before I remember I fought in New York, and I fell off a dirt bike and actually, like, rolled my ankle. And it was 
it was like a week before a fight. And I still, I mean, I thought I won, I knocked the dude out, but still, you know, it could have ended way worse. And now I'm more, I'm more chill now. I still like to do all that eventual stuff, but like when I have a fight schedule, it's like I'm going to calm it down. For you, I mean, look, your only loss was when you ventured overseas to take on Josh Taylor. We all know about that fight. Majority decision loss could have gone either way. Um for you, how hard has it been to be without that belt? And what's it going to mean for you to be able to put that belt around your waist once more? Yeah, man. So, like, the 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 crazy part of that story is when I was a world champion, I didn't even cherish it, to be honest. Like, it was easy to me, you know. Um, so, you know, I go to LA. My first two weeks, I always go to LA and train. And so when I went out to LA and trained, when I was fighting, when I fought career relic, that's when I won my – first real official title yeah. and so when i went out there, man i was playing around i was partying i still was always track i still always trained but oh uh, man we was partying we had parties at the at our airbnb we had a nice house in palisades we just it was just it was just so loose you know and and now without excuse me without my title it's like i've been clawing my way back up you know since i lost my title it's like i fell in the i fell in the pit Right. And since then, I just been clawing my way up, clawing, clawing, clawing my way up. And and now it's finally that moment again to basically re reclaim what I what I lost and, you know, what I really want. I know other guys are going to determine this, but if you have any information, please share it. Any information right now on approximate date when this fight would be would take place. And do you think it'll end up like in the, in the West Coast or Vegas territory? I, man, yeah, I don't know none of that stuff right now. I don't know yeah. where it'll at. Um, for me, I would think it'll make the most sense probably in somewhere like Texas. Um, mm -hmm. I live in Texas, um, and he's a Mexican-American. Of course, we have the most Mexicans here in Texas. So somewhere like San Antonio will be good. And yeah. there's no state. And then Vegas will be good. And um, and for me, something that will really sell if we do it in New Orleans. You know, if we do a fight in New Orleans, that'll be – I mean, that'll be huge. I can bring out the whole city in New Orleans like I did before. So something like that. But, yeah, it's. I mean, I'm just drawing stuff. I'm just drawing some cities out there right now. But I think in those places, that's where it could be. At the end of the day, I wanted to ask you about uh, Jose Ramirez uh, stepping aside. Um, I know he's going to get married. I mean, it, it seems that it's as simple as that. Do you think there's anything more to it than that? Well, I mean, I feel like, all right, it's three things, right? So the first thing is now they share the same answer. Right, so yeah. Rick, Rick Marigian manages both the guys now. You know, Jose Zapata just signed with him. Um, so I think that's probably like a conflict of interest right there. And then on top of that, it's a it'll it would have been a rematch between those two. Now, the first time I honestly thought Zapata beat Ramirez for the title. You know, now he was in the same month center. He was in his hometown. He got a decision. He got denied. Mm -hmm. But now Zapata is a since that since he lost to Ramirez, he's a way better fighter right now. He's way yeah. different. He's Fighter. So I think, you know, that's one thing. And then, of course, then the wet. The wet goes into that, too. So I think it's three I think it's three factors that play into, into why he didn't take that fight. One thing, I, I saw some comments you made that you are absolutely dug in on the idea to stay at 140 no matter what happens in this fight. And, you know, you look around. Let's, let's just start with uh, August 13th. We've got Tiafimo Lopez coming back to fight after his loss. How do you think he's going to do? What's your thoughts on Tiafimo and where he is as he goes into that fight? What does he need to prove to you? Um, I mean, I think for me, Tiafimo had the goods at 135. Not gonna lie, you know, um, he always had the goods to me. I thought he was the best at 135, but you know, in boxing, it's like it's like the stock market. You never know who's gonna who, who's gonna who is the winning stock gonna be. You know, I I didn't think that you know Devin Haney was gonna be undisputed, but now Devin Haney's undisputed. I would never yeah. thought that Moses would be. Who would have picked Cambosis beating Tia Fimo? Like, nowhere. And that's a huge upset. That's a huge, huge upset, you know? So, you know, he beat him. But I always thought Cam, I always thought Tia Fimo really had the goods. But it's a different weight class. It's bigger men. It's stronger fighters. So, you know, now it's about, you know, seeing what he'll do at 140. You know, I don't I don't know if he could take the dog. Where it's, a lot of, it's a lot of dogs at 140 right now. The, the 140 division is really warming up. It's really, really heating up. So, um, yeah, like I said, I, I think that the only thing that will probably drag me to 147 is a Josh Taylor rematch. That's the, like, I mean, that's for me, unless it's something huge, something real, real big. Um, but that's the only because it's a personal thing with me, and that's the only thing I think that 
I will go to 147 for the Josh Taylor rematch. Maybe somebody like a Pacquiao, of course, he's retired now. But, you know, that's the only thing I think that, you know, can get me to kind of change my mind. It's a Josh Taylor rematch. That's it. But I think that 140 is going to be the hottest. I agree. I agree. I mean, there's really no reason to leave. Is, it's it, right. It's no reason to leave. And really, so I was I was going to. I was thinking about contemplating on going to 147 because I thought I couldn't make the weight. You know, like uh -huh. after you know, two fights ago, not my last fight, but two fights, the two previous fights before that, I didn't make one for I didn't make I didn't make one for it. You know, I missed the weight two times. At first, my excuse was I didn't fight in a year, and then it was the pandemic and all that type of stuff. So I was like, all right, that's my excuse. Then the second time I didn't make the weight. So I was like, do I need to really go to 147? I don't know. But then I hired a nutritionist um, outside of camp where everybody was like, bro, you crazy. Why would you put yourself through that, not even having a fight? So I did a mini camp. I, I did a mini camp. I had a nutritionist come down, and he got me to 140, bam, like that. Like just with the nutrition, food, all that stuff, I didn't have to sit in the sauna no more. It was only through food. And, you know, at first the old school thought is that everybody sits in the sauna to do all that. And I wasn't doing that stuff no more. And then my last fight, I made 138 point something, 138.8, 138.9. So now I know for sure that I can make 140. So, and I'm getting older and I still, I'm getting lighter as I get older. So it's like now I know I can make 140. So why go to 47? If I know I can make 140, I, most likely I probably can rule over the division for a long time. Yeah, real quick before we lose track of that. You got to pass along three principles of that diet for those of us who are trying to drop a couple. Yeah, you got to stick to your diet. You definitely got to stick to your diet and stuff like that. I met, yeah, I, um, when a nutritionist comes, I have a real good nutritionist. He came. He's actually a um, Irish dude. You know, um, he is. He's from Ireland, but he lives in Canada. And you know, he came. He came down the first time, and it just. And I, I wasn't even in camp. And I lost the weight. I got the I got down to 140. So I knew once I have a fight sign, oh, it's gonna be easy. And I had the fight when I fought my last fight Dubai. Oh man, it was smooth. Everything was smooth. I made the weight. I felt good. I felt strong. I mean, everything was good. And now I'm. I'm I think I, I can. St I know I can stay at 140 for the rest of my career. Would I? We'll see. But I know I can. Lean foods, water, and exercise. Basically, yeah, yeah, basically. Okay? Okay, all right. Out of what? Yeah, lean foods, water, exercise. Basically, it's just it's it's like it's so hard for us coming from where I come from. You know, we eat trash, man. We eat oh. we eat from New Orleans. So I mean, I'm just we just eat and eat and eat, and it's we don't eat for our, in our culture. We don't eat for um for just for nutrition. We eat for pleasure. You know, that's yeah. that's our, why um, wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. Those we, beignets, man, man. It's so much. It's so much out there. I love so it. it's. That's why, you know, it, it's hard to, you know, it was hard to make the weight. But I, I listen now. I do everything he did. I can make 140. I probably can do it for the rest of my career. I mean, let's look look at it real quick. I mean, you've got – all these guys have mentioned 140 in their future. Ryan Garcia, uh, Javante Davis has fought there. Um, you know, you, you talked about Haney, Shakur Stevenson even. I mean, you, like we said, there is absolutely no reason. Out of all those guys, who would you want to fight the most? Um – Javante Davis. Oh, Josh, my gosh. Can you imagine? Josh, well, you said Josh Taylor going to 4-7. Javante yeah. Davis. I think, I think, yeah, I, for me, it's him. It all, it, it was, it was him. I mean, we got into it over the internet and stuff like that. He said some things, I said some things. So it's like, you know, I would definitely want to fight him for me. Um, yeah, and like you said, I mean, the ability, the flexibility to go up to 147 still is there for you. And obviously there's some big – names there i wanted to ask you it could because you are such a big fight fan are you disappointed or what you've been in the boxing business i mean if anyone knows that it's you uh how do you look at the the delayed negotiations or the stalled negotiations between spence and crawford obviously everyone wants to see that fight as a boxer what is your take of, of why things are being held up and why that's taken so long I guess it's, I mean, I guess they're not on the right side of the street, just like everybody say, you know, it's it's definitely aggravating, but I want to see that. I don't want to, you know, um, we don't want to wait until, like, we did the Floyd and Pacquiao thing. Now, of course, a lot of people say that Pacquiao was over here. He definitely wasn't because, I mean, Pacquiao still won titles way after that, you know, but it's just like, man, let's let's get the fight while it's hot, you know, let's get, like, both of them at, are at the top, you know, let's not wait until, 
something happens, you know, until it's, it's, it'll be a debate of who was the better fighter, you know, like right now, both of them are hot. Like Errol has been destroying people. Crawford's been destroying people. They're in the same way. It's only, Errol has, you know, most all the belts. El Crawford has one belt. Like, we need to get this fight right now. Like, why would you get this fight right now? You know, like, you know, I know, I know it's, it's the business. It's the boxing business. And I'm a, I'm a historian on the boxing business. I'm reading the yeah. book right now. Russell Peltz, um, that was a, a, a popular Philadelphia promoter. So I know how the business goes, you know, but sometimes you marinate it so much and, you know, it just, it ruins the food, right? And so I think, I, I don't want to get in that situation with them, like you marinate, keep marinating, keep marinating so much that it'll ruin it. You know, as a boxing fan, you know, I want to see, I want to see those two guys fight next. Like, why not next? Or maybe if it's not next, the fight after that. Let, let both of them get a fight in let them get a fight after that, you know, because I, I just wouldn't want nothing to happen to nobody and then it just destroys the fight. So, I mean, I want to see the fight for sure. Absolutely. Well, if there's one thing we know for sure, you versus Jose Cepeda is going to be happening shortly. So excited for you, Regis. Congratulations on getting that title fight. Looking forward to see them, seeing that happen and um, good luck in training. And hopefully we'll see you out here in SoCal. Yep, exactly. All right. Thank you. All right, bud. Take care of yourself.